Alex is one of my dragons that I've been following. It's hard to believe it's a fish at all! The ocean covers 71% of the Earth, and yet only 5% of it has been explored. The ocean is another world entirely. One glance, and you just know that it houses a lot of mysterious creatures. The truth is, you won't see most of them on the surface, but the good news is, you can see them at a good distance, caught on tape. From leafy sea dragons to ghost fish, these are 20 mysterious underwater creatures caught on tape. Number 20. Leafy Sea Dragon Meet the leafy sea dragon, a creature that masquerades as a twig in the water. It also appears to be so harmless. Well, to humans it is harmless, but not to tiny prey such as small fish and crustaceans. You could ditch the name Leafy Sea Dragon and just call it the Master of Camouflage because you would never have imagined you have seen a fish if you ever came across it. The Leafy Sea Dragon is a fish, but unlike any you know. It is a poor swimmer. It typically drifts with the currents instead of putting forth the effort to swim. That's not because this creature wants to be lazy or weak, but rather because it has almost invisible weak fins along its back and sides that can only be used for maneuvering and slow swimming. And while most animals chase down their food, the leafy sea dragon waits for its prey while sitting in the seaweed or kelp. It can do that because of its leaf-like appendages that blend well with the plants. Ignorantly, the small fish thinking they are passing by a seaweed would get caught by the leafy sea dragon. The sea dragon's appearance isn't the only thing that makes it mysterious. Its reproduction is even more amazing. Once the female sea dragon lays eggs, the male carries the eggs with a patch attached near his tail. The leafy sea dragon is one mysterious creature. Number 19. Box Crab Speaking of mystery, the box crab is another mysterious creature caught on tape under the ocean. Due to its size, some people call it the giant box crab, while others name it based on its nature and call it the shame-faced crab. And yes, some call it the red-spotted box crab for its color. Whatever name you choose doesn't change the fact that the box crab is a rare creature indeed. It is not an animal you can see from the surface because of its nocturnal habit and the fact that it burrows into the sand. One look at the box crab and you can guess where its name was obtained. The way it pulls its large, unusually shaped claws into its body creates a box. And often when creating the box, it does it like it is ashamed, hence the name shame-faced crab. But in reality, there's nothing like shame in the world of box crab. The claws, when extended, are capable of covering the entire front of the body, including the eyes, which give it protection against predators and also protect its eyes once buried in the sand. Its claws are a very useful part of the crab's body. No wonder it protects them dearly. The right-hand claw has a large hook, and it is used for crushing mollusks, such as snails and oysters, while the left-hand claw is more delicate and used to pick the pieces out of the crushed shell. How fast the box crab uses its claws, pulls them in, and buries itself in the sand is amazing. And it's all thanks to the structure of its body. The back of its body is sloped downwards, which makes it easy for the crab to push itself downwards and backward into the sand. If you're wondering how the box crab manages to stay alive buried inside the sand, the answer is, its eyes and respiratory organs are set high up on the head, which means the crab breathes just fine in the sand. Number 18. Ribbon Eel The last five seconds most definitely reminded you of a ribbon. A ribbon won't move beautifully like that in an ocean, unless it is controlled by someone. The creature you just saw is called the ribbon eel. Undoubtedly, the ribbon eel is one captivating creature that leads fascinating life cycles. It involves three completely different phases of coloration and also completely changes in gender. The ribbon eel begins its journey in the ocean as a black eel recognized by the bright yellow dorsal fin, which runs the length of its dark black body. As it matures, the black changes to a bright electric blue with an equally vivid yellow dorsal fin. This change means the eel is in its male stage. Finally, as the male ribbon eel grows to approximately one and a half meters or four feet, its color changes to yellow, and this is when the ribbon eel enters its female stage. At this stage, the female eel can lay eggs. Most times, the ribbon eel is found on healthy coral reefs and sometimes on damaged coral reefs, 
and what you find visible is the ribbon eel's head and upper body with the rest of the body buried in the sand. But when it decides to come out of its hiding place, it is a special sight to behold. If you ever come across one, especially one that is swimming freely, you'll be tempted to touch it, but be careful, they are carnivores. But relax, no one has been eaten by a ribbon eel before. The ribbon eel feasts on shrimp and small fish. It is, however, often mistaken as an aggressive creature because of how it opens and shuts its mouth in what could be interpreted as a threatening manner. Even with this information, one look at the ribbon eel might scare you because of its long, protruding nostrils and razor-like teeth. Number 17. Big Fin Squid This mysterious creature was first spotted in a tape captured by a camera dropped in the ocean. No one knew what it was other than it was a big squid. When the tape was analyzed, it revealed the squid's big eyes and strong, curved beaks, two tentacles as well as eight arms of varying lengths. The arms measure thickest near the body and taper to a narrow point. Each arm possesses two rows of suckers, with each sucker measuring less than two millimeters wide and sporting a ring of sharp teeth. It really did not look like any known creature until it was spotted in other parts of the ocean. Now, the scientists have more to say about the creature. The big fin squid, also known as the glitter or oval squid, ranges in color. You can see them in translucent white, pale yellow, and brownish pink. A big fin squid has chromatophores covering some parts of its body, allowing it to rapidly change color and pattern. In addition, it has iridophores in the head which produce iridescent red and green lights when exposed to light. Big fin squid is a carnivorous predator that eats various marine life. It often hunts at night and retreats to deeper waters to hide during the day. Its diet consists primarily of prawns, crustaceans, and fish. With its tentacles, it grabs its prey and uses its eight arms to hold on to the prey while eating it. Number 16. Noganoid Sea Spider You must have seen spiders on land and some very wild spiders, but isn't it shocking to know that there are spiders in the ocean? Especially in the cold depths of the Antarctic Ocean where life is tough. In this region, the temperature can drop below the freezing point. There is little or no plant life here, which means it can be pretty difficult to make a home here. But one animal that has miraculously survived this condition is the sea spider. The sea spider is not actually a spider, but a distant relative in the phylum Arthropoda called Pycnogonida, hence the name Noganoid sea spider. The sea spider had been found in different places across the globe, from shallow tropical seas to freezing oceans, but they grow the biggest in Antarctica. They can be as big as a house cat. This shows that the size range is attributed to the habitat, the sea spider loves to feed on soft-bodied prey such as anemones, sponges, corals, jellies, worms, nudibranchs, and occasionally algae. The sea spider bites its prey by using the proboscis and sucks out the guts. Number 15. Nudibranch. This creature will give you mixed feelings. The nudibranch is one of the most beautiful animals in the world. But when you discover that it is also a slime-oozing creature with a boneless body, you might go, Ew, so gross! But when you take that away, the nudibranch can be very beautiful because of its colors. The colors are taken on from what the nudibranch eats. How so? When the nudibranch eats, it absorbs and displays its prey's pigment, the substance that gives the prey its color. But sometimes nudibranchs can also absorb toxins from their prey. The good news is it can secrete the poison from its own skin. Another important fact to note is that the nudibranchs are simultaneous hermaphrodites. They can mate with any other mature member of their species, so there is no need to try to differentiate by sex. Number 14. Pink See-Through Fantasia What is an undergarment doing underwater? That's probably what you thought when you heard pink see-through Fantasia, but don't get it wrong, this is about a sea cucumber. Since it was discovered back in 2007, its survival tactic has made it relevant to this day. The pink see-through Fantasia got its name from its transparent skin, through which you can see its mouth to intestine and even to the anus. It is a bioluminescent animal, which means it emits light. When this animal is in danger, it uses the light to ward off potential predators. It swims using the finger-like webbing beneath its body. What's more amazing is its unique feeding mechanism. The pink see-through Fantasia filters nutrients from sediments on the ocean floor. And while doing that, it helps to oxygenate the area. This is a win-win for the sea cucumber and other creatures that live in the deep sea. So not only is it cute, but also a hard worker. 
Now you want to have one for yourself. Sorry, that's not happening. This creature is a deep sea dweller, which means it might not do well in captivity. Number 13. Yeti Crabs We've all heard about Yeti, the mythical creature said to stalk the Himalayas, but it's safe to say none of us has seen it. And now we present to you a living Yeti discovered deep in the oceans. It's everything Yeti-like except that it's a crab and not an ape-like creature. The Yeti crab was discovered in 2005, and it represents a new species and also a new genus named Kiwa, after the mythological Polynesian goddess of shellfish. This creature was named Yeti for its hairiness and all-white body like the mythical creature for which it was named. The Yeti crab has no eyes, but even with that disability, the Yeti crab has several unique adaptations to survive the harsh biome of the cold and desolate deep sea floor. The Yeti crab is characterized by a generally crab-like shape measuring about six inches long and the long, bristly claws that enable it to harvest bacteria. Only the deep sea submarines can reach where the Yeti crabs live, and because of that, there's a lot yet to be known about this mysterious creature. Number 12. Peacock Mantis Shrimp Take a look at this beautiful crustacean, and you won't question why it was named Peacock Mantis Shrimp. But don't let looks fool you. This crustacean is a really ferocious predator undersea. It hunts with clubbed forelimbs and has one of the strongest punches in the world. The mantis shrimp can punch with the speed of a 22 caliber bullet, strong enough to break the shells of its prey, as well as aquarium glass. You might want to reconsider having one in your aquarium. Its punch is so strong that when it hits its target, the velocity causes water to vaporize, then implode with a sharp bang, very high heat, and a flash of light, all of which is felt by its prey animal as an additional blow. When the mantis shrimp is not using its limb, it lies folded under its body, compressing a saddle-shaped spring that drives the animal's stupendous strikes. All species of mantis shrimp are fighters, as some wield spear-like limbs that can pierce their prey instead of club-like limbs for punching them. Number 11. Maris orthocana. You almost can't tell the difference between a javelin that is jet-powered and a Maris orthocana, a creature found at depths of 200 to 800 meters in the cold Arctic waters. Maris orthocana is a siphonophore, and siphonophores are colonial relatives of jellyfish and sea anemones. Each member of the colony is called a zooid, and all zooids are clones of the founding protozoid. All along the length of the protozoid are the nectophores, looking like jars or lamps. They have an orange lining which is a food canal that the entire colony shares. Actually, the nectophores are pretty much jellyfish on a stick. They contract so that the colony can slowly swim through the ocean. With the much diminished current of the deep, the colony can even coordinate everything so they have enviable control over what direction they go in. Number 10. Blobfish If you were ever asked to think of the ugliest animal you can imagine, which animal would it be? If that wasn't the blobfish, you just got a replacement. A pale, pink, gelatinous blob with a droopy, downturned mouth and large, sagging nose. In 2013, the fish was named the world's ugliest animal, but it only shot this hideous fish to fame, with memes, songs, soft toys, and even TV characters created in its honor. However, the fish was misunderstood. According to scientist Richard Arnott, this viral image of the blobfish is nothing like what it looks like in reality. The fish only looks that terrible when it has been torn from its home and suffered devastating tissue damage due to the rapid depressurization as it was dragged to the surface. The blobfish resides thousands of feet underwater, and there, the misunderstood blobfish looks like a normal fish. These tadpole-shaped fish have bulbous heads, large jaws, tapered tails, and feathery pectoral fins. It does not have scales, and rather than scales, it has loose and flabby skin. It has bones and muscles, but the bones are not strong and neither is the muscle thick. Instead of relying on those, it relies on the water pressure to hold its shape together. That's why blobfish collapse into a squishy mush when it is pulled up to the surface. Blobfish are usually found in dark, cold, and dangerous habitats where there is no scarcity of food. The blobfish lies in wait for its prey and just eats anything that passes by like crustaceans, brittle stars, anemones, and cartoons. This allows them to preserve energy, which is key to their survival. Number 9. Sea Pen You already know no one writes in the ocean, so why the name? 
Obviously, the sea pen is not a real pen, but it was not after one suborder which looks like those antique feather pens. The truth is, just one group of sea pens actually live up to this antique pen-like description. The other species have club-like structures, so maybe they should have been called the sea clubs. A sea pen is basically an immobile animal. They don't really move, they are on their own, and so they fit into the same category as sea anemones and coral. In fact, they are classed as octocoral, which has multiple polyps, which is a sac-like structure, and each polyp will have eight tentacles. We can say these eight tentacles gave the sea pen the pass into the octocoral family. You can agree that these multiple polyps make the sea pen look amazing, but they also have a good purpose for being there. The polyps covering the sea pen end up becoming rigid, and in the process, the sea pen loses its tentacles. The rigid polyps then become responsible for water intake, food intake, and reproductive structures. Although we say that the sea pen is anchored into the ground and that they don't move about, they can pull the anchor and move to a new spot if they need to. But mostly, they are in a spot with a nice current that can bring them all kinds of plankton, their favorite food. Number eight, red hand fish. The red hand fish is a fish that walks rather than swims like most. That is because of its modified fins that resemble human hands. There are not many red hand fishes in the world. They are thought to have a total population of just 100 adults. Their color varies from bright red to light pink, and these creatures are typically less than 10 centimeters in length. At their early stages of life, they do not spend their time drifting as larvae within the water column, and therefore have poor dispersal capacity, which limits their ability to colonize new areas. The reproductive pattern of the red handfish is complex and so not much is understood about it. However, we do know that the females lay their eggs at the base of diverse seaweeds or seagrass and stand guard until they hatch directly onto the sand as a fully developed juvenile between four and six millimeters in length. Number seven, colossal squid. You might have guessed by its name, but you really have no idea how big the colossal squid is. It is the heaviest invertebrate on earth. This gigantic sea creature can grow up to 33 feet long and weigh up to 1,500 pounds. However, many scientists think that some colossal squids in the ocean are even bigger. It is not only the colossal squid's body that's big, but also its eyeballs. Its eyes are the biggest eyes of any other animal in the world. The eyes of the colossal squid are bigger than 12 inches in diameter. That's a size bigger than a standard NBA basketball. But instead of using these eyeballs to sight prey, it uses them to spot a larger predator like sperm whales, especially in the dark deep sea. Like other species of squid, the colossal squid also has two tentacles and eight arms. In addition to their many sharp hooks, colossal squids also have hundreds of suckers on each of their limbs. And in addition to that, it has a sharp, parrot-like beak that it uses to test through the prey. Number six. Hagfish. All over the world, there are estimated 76 species of hagfish, and these creatures are also known as slime eels. However, they are not eels, but they belong to the class Agnatha, which is for fish without jaws. They can be found as deep as 5,600 feet and prefer to stay near the soft sea floor, where they can bury themselves if threatened. Many people would say the hagfish is disgusting. That's due to their sliminess, which is good for the ocean ecosystem. Amazingly, the fish has four hearts. One serves as the main pump, while the other three serve as accessory pumps. The hagfish breathes through its nose and skin and takes in water through its nasopharyngeal duct, which leads to the pharynx and gill pouches. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick a diver drops his camera in the ocean, but when he looks at the footage after going back to retrieve it, he is shocked by what he sees giant creatures that look like many different creatures with their crustacean-like shells and sets of human-like teeth. When you take a closer look, you'll know you can't define what these creatures are. They are made up of bolts and nuts and look like aliens. And with the giant white shark lurking behind them? There are so many questions that come to mind. The diver has no clue what they are and neither do we. But what do you think these creatures are and what is their relationship with the gigantic white shark? Have you ever encountered a strange and creepy alien-like creature underwater? Let us know in the comments below. Number five, Christmas tree worm. Who doesn't love Christmas? 
Christmas Day comes once in a year and so does tree decorating, but deep in the ocean, every day is Christmas. There's always at least a Christmas tree, all thanks to Christmas tree worms. Christmas tree worms are a type of polychaete, a group of segmented worms that contains over 13,000 species, and these worms brighten up the ocean. What you're looking at right now are the Seuss-style plumes, which come in an array of color morphs and are called crowns. These crowns come in pairs because each worm has two of them. The crowns are used for catching passing prey, but they do more than that. They are also used to harness oxygen, and for that, most people mistake the structure for gills. The worms settle on corals, but are pretty choosy when choosing coral to settle on. There have been speculations that landing on carefully selected species could help the worms with reproduction, while some believe it is to avoid predation. Number 4. Gulper Eel Imagine weird, creepy, and cool in one body. Most likely it's not something you've come across. But from all that you've seen so far, chances are a creature like that might exist, and of course, in the ocean. Say hello to the mysterious gulper eel, also known as the pelican eel, one of the most unusual creatures discovered underwater. While the ribbon eel stands out because of its flashy colors, the gulper eel doesn't need color or size to stand out, it just does. And yes, you guessed right. The massive gulping mouth makes it easier to spot the gulper eel from anywhere. This mouth allows them to swallow prey whole, and this includes larger fishes because the gulper eel knows the ability of its mouth. More than looking for what to eat, a larger percentage of this creature's energy is channeled into finding a mate. This is more important to this creature. So important that the mature male grows larger olfactory organs to sniff out females while simultaneously losing its teeth. And according to research, the male gulper eel dies soon after mating due to the resources it puts into reproduction. The gulper eel is definitely a sucker for love. Number 3. Comb Jelly Most times the comb jelly is mistaken for a jellyfish. Yes, there are similarities, but the comb jelly is actually not a type of jellyfish, and the truth is, they are not even related to one another. The comb jelly got its name from the eight rows of tiny comb-like plates that it uses to propel itself through the water. As it swims, the rows of comb plates diffract the light to produce a shimmering rainbow effect that keeps you stunned. Comb jellies find good by detecting chemical changes in the water around them. The changes send them a message that there's something to eat nearby. All they need to do is follow the potency of the chemicals and a good meal is waiting at the end of the path. Comb jellies are also cannibals. They will eat other comb jellies that are larger than themselves. They do this by biting off chunks of them with special cilia structures in their mouths. The good news is they don't sting, unlike the jellyfish. Comb jellies can be captured and examined up close without the fear of being stung. This is something you definitely don't want to try with a jellyfish. Number 2. Pyrosome if you're a diver, you might have seen a long inflatable tube in the ocean and moved past it. Don't be surprised, that tube might just be a pyrosome. The pyrosome looks lifeless when you see it until you disturb it and it flows brightly with bioluminescence. This tube about 40 feet long is made of tiny animals called zooids. Each one has its own body, but they are all physically joined together as a single colonial organism. An even stranger fact about pyrosomes is that all the zooids that make up a single pyrosome are clones of one individual. And more interestingly, each zooid can replicate itself and thereby increase the zooid population. Every zooid is physically connected because they all share tissue. Each zooid sucks in water, filters out plankton to eat, and blows the rest into the inside of the tube. One end of the tube is closed while the other is open. Water flows out the open end, letting the whole colony move by jet propulsion. Isn't this creature just amazing? Number 1. Ghost Catfish According to stories and myths, ghosts are pale, translucent, and wispy. This makes the name Ghost Catfish perfect for this creature. The ghost fish is also known as glassfish because of its translucent body. Its beating heart, as well as its spine, can be seen clearly from the outside. If you're thinking of stocking a home aquarium, the ghost fish is perfect for you. They are very small in size, and at the largest, they are about two and a half inches long. While in captivity, the translucent body might only make the fish beautiful, but in the ocean, it protects predators such as big fishes. Ghost fishes also travel in schools, which also helps to protect them. 
They love to capture their food as it falls through the water, unlike other types of catfish known as bottom feeders. They feed on mosquito larvae, brine shrimp, and bloodworms. Although a good number of them have been captured and sold for display in home aquariums, it has not in any way had a major effect on its overall population. We can be sure the ghost fish will be around for a long time. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.